What do we make of the fact that not even Liberal MPs seem to know their own policies? Uh, Tonya McCharles, senior reporter with the Toronto Star, Ian Bailey, a reporter with the Globe and Mail, and CTV News infectious disease specialist, Dr. Abdushar Kawi. I got to start with you, Tonda. Uh, normally, no, you know, you've seen a million of these panels. I, yeah. I, I just can't believe a, 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 an MP was not aware of the fundamental Pfizer-Moderna promise of this government and said that it was contingent. He's wrong, by the way. Just what do you make of that kind well, of confusion? Okay. Okay, well, so I'm even now more confused by your clarification from Minister Anand's office, because Minister Anand herself on January 8th told us in a briefing that, in fact, what Greg Fergus told you was right, that, and here's her quote, the numbers that we are using for our predictions are based on the assumption that the vaccines we have procured will indeed be approved by Health Canada. And her department at that time was saying, yes, their, their goal assumes that Health Canada will approve uh, more vaccines. Now, yes, we will get um, the, uh, they expect some 60 million doses by the end of September. That should be enough to cover 30 million adult Canadians, as Michelle Rempel Garner was uh, going on in a question period about. But look, it is confusing. And, but there, there is also the expectation very strongly that given that the United Kingdom and other countries have now approved AstraZeneca, that in fact Health Canada will as well. And some I had spoken to earlier this month thought that approval could come as early as late January, early February. Then the whole ballgame changes. It's a one-shot deal. It's a vaccine you keep in the fridge, easier to administer, easier to transport. So I think that the whole thing... The numbers game is actually now hurting the government as opposed to helping them in any way. Talking about vaccines in the abstract helps nobody. It never has. They've always used that as a talking point. And really, it just, it's baffle gap. Right. Okay, I, I just want to say this, Tonda. You're, you're, you're <laughs> right, it's confusing. I'm going to quote the minister in other media reports, and we again, I'll yeah. read you her statement from our office. In terms of Pfizer and Moderna numbers, she'd said in multiple media reports, in large parts, we are planning that Pfizer and Moderna doses will comprise the number of doses required to make sure yeah. that any Canadian who wishes to be vaccinated will be vaccinated by the end of September. So if they get more, I've, it's always been accelerated. Uh, Ian Bailey, yeah. and then I'll move to the shark. Uh, Ian Bailey, what do you make of this? I just, I'm, I mean, I know there's a lot of tension around this, and I'm not trying to be partisan here. I think the point is, if they don't know their own policy, how the heck are Canadians supposed to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's really concerning this kind of confusion about uh, the supplies of vaccine. You know, when your house is on fire, you want, you are concerned if the fireman says that there, there isn't enough water, they're going to take a break because there's no water. I think, you know, Canadians want to see the vaccine supplies because their expectations that they're going to be vaccinated. Here in British Columbia last week, we heard a very specific program for vaccination of British Columbians uh, beyond long-term care, beyond others, down the details of how it will work. But that plan hinges on supplies of vaccines. It hinges on supplies coming in uh, in a timely manner, and it doesn't work unless the supplies do come in. So, so to hear this confusion is really concerning. 